Good morning, homesteaders. Welcome to our homestead. Water is life, especially in a homestead. And if you have water problems on the homestead, it's going to be a serious challenge. And that's what I'm going through right now. Let me show you what we're working on today and how I'm trying to remedy it. So of course we've got our well house here and I've had nothing but trouble over the years with this. We replaced the pressure tank, which was pretty easy to do. We did a video on how to do that and it's actually worked okay, but it's always leaked at the wellhead itself. And that's because it's got some weird pressure fitting on it. But what we've done is we've brought in and teed off. We brought in our poly from our rain tanks, teed that off so that I can either switch between the well or the rain tanks. There's an issue with the rain tanks as well, and let me get into that. Luckily, we do not have many leaks in here, just one tiny drip. So I need to get that taken care of, but it's no big deal. I'm gonna go up here near the rain tanks and show you the challenge we're having with that. And it all has to do with the fancy expensive pump that I bought. Now I've hooked everything up correctly and I've done everything I need to do with that pump according to the instructions, but just not working. And I actually don't know why. So if any of you have an idea why, let me know. So we have our above ground jet pump. It's a Grunfos. These things are supposed to run really well and be bulletproof, but these are not. And I was pretty upset, I'm still pretty upset that I paid the amount of money that I have for these because this is my second one. Everything's plumbed correctly and I've got our pressure tank in, but on the bottom actually, underneath this housing, which I had to take off and put back on, and I'll tell you why in a second, this just leaks water right out the bottom. Everything's seated correctly, the O-ring's not pinched, um, it just blows water out the bottom. I have no idea why. My hens are loud this morning. These two tanks have about 5,000 gallons of water in them, they're full, and I've only opened the valve just slightly to let pressure into the pump and to prime the pump. I also took the valve off the top and primed the pump and still blowing water out the bottom. Here's what happened to the old impeller. These are plastic impellers. On a $600 pump, man, should I expect more than a plastic impeller? I guess not nowadays, but it just sheared right off. And luckily I had another one. So I had another one that I took the impeller out of that one and put it in the housing and I just can't get it to seat correctly. I don't know, it looks seated correctly. It just blows water out the bottom. So that's a big challenge because I need these rainwater tanks to be able to water my garden because if you know from a previous video, our, wall, our well is salty and that salty water is destroying our garden. Now the salty well is no big deal if you've got livestock, they can drink it but for vegetables, it's not good. So also today, I am trenching. I rented this trencher because I need to find my old water line that I cut putting in the septic, the new septic. If you never saw that video, you should click at the top of the screen. We did it ourselves. I did it with the help of a contractor who's a friend, and yeah, we got it in, it works great. In the process of digging for the new leach lines for our septic, we cut through several irrigation lines. Well, it's just one line, but we cut through it apparently four times. So we repaired it here in the first cut, actually three times. Repaired it there in the first cut. And we repaired it right here where we cut through it again. And I thought, I thought that that was the last break. Nope. We also sliced it over here. So we've got the end of the line we found. I can't believe I did find this thing, but we found the end of the line right here. I cannot find where else it's cut. I cannot find, I dug a trench there, I dug a trench there, I dug a trench there, and we've got some pretty serious clay, not too far under the top of the surface. So we have to trench over here to try to find the end of the line and then repair that. So we need to repair that. Also, we had a giant oak tree come down over here, but luckily it did not hit our connection down here. And I'll just mention, look at what has grown up already after we 
uh, forestry mulched this area. If you didn't see that video, we did it a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, and it's already grown up. Look at this, one of these spiky vines. It's already as tall as me. So I've got to get my brush hog down in here and keep things clear, or this is going to grow up really fast and it's going to just be a waste of money. There's this giant oak tree that came down across my fence. That was because of our nine inches of rain and it just, the water pool down here next to the dry creek, obviously wasn't dry at that time, and undermined the roots and took this thing out. I actually had to repair this line right here. And it looks like we had some branches come down on top of it, but it didn't break it. Thank the Lord it didn't break this one as well because I just repaired this from a branch that had fallen off one of these tall oaks next to me. I should have covered that back up, but I was waiting to see if the connection held and if I needed to do anything else. I gotta get the dirt back on top of that to protect it. All right, we're way over on the other property right now and you can see where the water from that line I was just showing you ends up. This is where it lands right next to this orchard and that's where it stops. Now I could reach my new plot up there with a hose or several hoses. I always recommend having a ton of natural rubber hoses on your homestead, but it's so much easier if I just trench it out, hard line it under the ground. I don't have to worry about draining hoses in the winter, so on and so forth, or leaking all over the place from the different connections. So I'm gonna bring it up here through this orchard. So I'm going to come up here and you can see where the new grape trellis is uh, in the background and that's where the blueberries are going to go also. So I'm going to be putting those in very soon and if this summer is super dry here I need the water up here to be able to have those survive. So we've got blueberries and grapes there, center we've got our bees and then over next to it we have our new garden plot. So I need to get water to that. I'm going to be doing a ton of trenching today. Also in this area here, this is where I hope to put that off-grid cabin for friends and family if they need to come stay. And so that, that's the portion of the property that I'm gonna use for that. So I'm gonna run a water line to that and just you know put a box in the ground and understand where it ends. So I don't have to fuss around with trying to get water there in the future and renting another trencher, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna try and do it now and do as much as I possibly can. So I'm probably going to run at least 500 feet maybe of new, new PVC water line under the ground. It's gonna be a big day and I've got that trencher rented for the entire day. Let's get to work. First order of business is to get this water line reconnected over on this side so that I do have some water over on the other side. We finally got all of our trenches dug. We did about 510 linear feet and this is part of it. This is where the poly pipe is running down from the well where I'm plumbing it in from the rainwater tanks. We're only coming halfway to the house at this point. You can see the poly line laying on the ground right there. Let me go show you how things ended up on the other portion of the property. Here we are trying to find that line that runs to the orchard on the north part of the property. Guess what? I never found it. I cut a bunch of trenches perpendicular to where the line should be and I just never found it. There's nothing down there. So guess what? I had to trench all the way down, all the way down. That's 274 feet to where I know that the old connection is and it's there because I dug it up and I had to repair it earlier. But yeah, 274 feet of pipe that I have to buy because I just cannot find where they put the pipe originally, which is pretty ridiculous. It should be here. But the way that people run pipe in the countryside is just not logical. And as you can see with me, I couldn't get it straight either. That's because I had to go around that big oak tree that's fallen down there. And I had to come on the side of this giant pine and I'm gonna have to negotiate a route. But that is why I am drawing a map of everything that I do on the property. Not only for my own sanity, but for someone who may purchase this property in the future, although I don't see myself ever leaving here. 
Having a map of where things is, is so critical. It saves you time and it's probably going to save you money too. Even just a hand drawing that you throw in your important documents in your filing cabinet, do it because it's worth it. Here we are in the north property and this is where the blueberries are going, the grapes behind it, and I dug the trench this way to the new garden plot. I still have to get the fence up for that. Down here next to me is where the bees will be, kind of in the center of the two. And then I've teed that off and trenched all the way down, all the way down into the old orchard, which is where the water came up from the previous owner, or actually two owners ago. So we trenched all along here and then we also teed it off here and this is where I want to put the off-grid cabin for family and friends. It was fairly easy down here because the sandy loam is kind of thick but as you get higher up here it's not as thick so going through some clay is a challenge with that smaller machine that I rented and I couldn't go up the hill. There's a little four foot hill here and I had to come down from that side because the machine just would not get any traction and would not pull itself up that hill at all. And then we came down here and we are going to connect in to where the water came from the south property. Now we are pretty far from the barn where the pumps are, or I should say the one junky pump that broke that I showed you earlier. Hopefully we can find a pump that works. That's not gonna break. I gotta call the company today. It should still be under warranty. We'll see what happens with that. I might need a stronger pump. I'm not sure, but there's a pressure tank on there and that's coming out at only 28 PSI. So I might need to bump the pressure switch up a bit so I can bump the pressure of the tank up a bit. It's only got a 3050 on it. That's all that I had before and I'll find a 4060 for it. But I hope to get the volume and pressure that I need to come all the way up over here. Okay, friends, remember, water is life for your homestead and for you and your family. And I really hope that we can get this project done so I can water my new garden spaces over here because digging another well is just not in the budget. Because around here, a new well at the depth that we have to go to hit our aquifer is about 400 feet. And then that does not guarantee that my well won't be salty like my current well on the other property. And I'm not gonna spend $35,000 to dig a well that's salty. So I will do everything that I possibly can to get our rainwater off of our barn and over here. And also, if that means building the structure over here or some structure over here, catching rainwater off that to be able to irrigate this area, then I'll do that because that's gonna be cheaper in the long run because it's gonna serve two purposes. So what I could do first is I could build just the frame and the roof of whatever structure I wanna put here and just start catching water off of it. And that would actually serve this part of the property really well. Not sure if I could dig a pond here anywhere. I mean, that would help, but there's really not that much space to be able to dig a pond that's that big. And I have not budgeted for it, right? So. Everything you see me get here on the channel, I think about ahead of time and I save my money for that specific thing. So like if you saw my uh, tree stump video on how to remove a tree stump, I, there's no way I could have afforded to get a stump grinder or somebody to get a stump grinder out here and grind 30 trees. It's just not cost effective for me to do that. If I was to budget for that and think about it ahead of time, then I could afford it. But there's so many other things that we need as a family before that, that the way that I did it is just perfect. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about seven mistakes that you want to avoid when growing blueberries. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.